Hello from the Cloud Castle of Pamukkale. I am made to be free. We're here for three days and today we're visiting Heropolis, which is right up here. John has treated us to a rental car. So for the other two days that we're here, we're gonna go and visit some sites that are a little bit farther away from Pamukkale. Should be a really good three days. So to walk on the travertines, you have to take your shoes off. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights We're only like a couple feet away from where we took our shoes off but this is cool getting to walk on the travertines with the water flowing It's just really neat I think Instagram people would have you believe that they're like, it's like all natural, but of course, like so many things, it is not, it is not as it seems. It's a classic case of Instagram burst reality here. Instagram would never show you these big brown spots everywhere, of course, as occurs in nature, but you can occasionally work a little extra hard, play the angles and get the shots that, that Instagram has led you to believe are, are so easy here. Jumping from cliffs so high. It's very squishy and muddy in these pools. <laughs> Sometimes we're crashing down. So as Tracy mentioned, it's an Instagram spot. Honestly, it was kind of coolest down at the bottom where the water was really flowing down. At the top here, it's mainly tourists and a few pools. But in general, it, it's it is still a very cool like natural phenomenon to visit it's neat and definitely start at the bottom and come early because it seems like most people start at the top so at least you'll have a little less crowd at first now that we've done the walk up the travertines of pamukkale guess what they're not soft white clouds no they're, they're... hard like particles <laughs> like rock it's hurt it's hard on your feet it hurts there was something we didn't bring up when we were down at the lower ticket gate and we just said just the 30 euro ticket which is just entry she said okay headphones here you go it's included tap the card popped up on my wise app 60 canadian dollars i thought hold on this place is expensive but it's not 60 canadian dollars expensive she said included but added the extra 350 lira for about 10 Canadian dollars, or about 15 Canadian dollars for headphones. Just added it in. And so we complained and we're like, hey, you like, we didn't want these. We didn't ask for these. We just want 30 euro. And she uh, kind of begrudgingly refunded us the additional fee. Just check the cost and know your conversion and, and don't blindly tap because we saved, the three of us saved a combined almost $50 by just noticing that she was trying to add in. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on We holding. are now going to explore the Heropolis ruins. Our nice long dry walk from the southern gate up here to the top of the amphitheater. It's really cool, you can like see the city down below broken out into almost like kind of like layer zones, little sections. It's still evident today you can see it. Even if the sky is this is probably the most impressive amphitheater we've come to so far. The stage is beautiful. This is really neat. The side of this place is very large. We showed you a part of it, but then there's also this whole other side. And there's ruins up here that we're gonna walk to. We were just commenting on how there's like no people up here. It's a bit of a climb, so that's maybe one reason. The second reason seems to be that people care more about the travertines than the actual ruins. But look, it's like an old Roman tomb. Some really nice columns here. And we're all by ourselves. 
So there's the church there up on the hill. And we kept, kept coming up and there's all these tombs. It's very cool, I'm glad we walked this way. Look at them all. Those are some too. Something that we've noticed around the site are these like aqueducts that kind of just divert or used to divert water all over the city. It's kind of cool. We were gonna go to the Cleopatra pools to go for a swim after exploring, but it's an extra 10 euro to get into. And you can actually walk into the facility to see it. So I don't know if we're gonna bother. We've seen it, it's really cool because there's like old columns in the water. Apparently this was an old Roman bath and all the columns like fell into the water and they just never repaired it. So that aspect is really neat, but for 10 euro, it doesn't seem as like enjoyable as we thought it was gonna be. So that ends our time here at Heropolis and the Pamukkale Travertines. Uh, there's a couple different exits, but the best way for us is actually to walk all the way back down the Travertines and walk just into town down there. Good morning from John's, Turkey. John's Whip. John's oh. Whip. John rented a car because it's really a pain in the ass to get to the airport. Uh, from Pamukkale to the Denizli airport. So we get to benefit from that. Today we're going to... Sagalosis. That's how I would pronounce it. <laughs> it's like three hours east of Pamukkale and we don't know what to expect, but we're hoping there's no tourists because there's only one thing tourists hate more. Uh, <laughs> the one thing tourists hate more than anything is other tourists. hour drive we've arrived now to Sagalassos here at the, the top of a mountain of oh, this beautiful mountain valley uh, so I'm really excited and the temperature is the best it's been in Turkey in a long time it's only 25 degrees out it feels like a dream perched here high on the mountains looking at the valleys below is the ancient city Sagalassos founded apparently originally in 1200 BC by an aggressive sea people, maybe the sea peoples that caused the Bronze Age collapse, came here in 1200 BC and settled on the side of this mountain, seeking, looking for a defensive position uh, on which to make a stand. Maybe they were running from something, maybe it's what all the sea people were running from. In 333 BC, Alexander the Great came in and brought this city into his empire. Following Alexander the Great's rule, this city fell under Roman rule where it provided iron, wheat from the valleys below to the Roman Empire until it was struck down by that large earthquake in the seventh century BC, where it was largely forgotten about as these things are until a French explorer came and claimed to have discovered this town that everybody knew about. It's here that I think we may have one of our most enjoyable ruins visits here in Turkey. Tristan groping the no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> connecting. I'm connecting with this stuff. <laughs> Like it's been so so nice. Tristan already mentioned the cool weather, but also the lack of people just makes like you have whole spaces to yourself. It's really cool that they have running water in the fountains too, just to like kind of feel more like what it was like back in the day. Yeah, no, it, this has been like a really really nice day. I'm really glad we came out here. If you have your own vehicle, definitely try to make it out here.
we have concluded our exploration of Sagalassos, this ancient mountain city. I really enjoyed it. I think we all really, really enjoyed it. The best part was that it's not super touristy, right? It's only people who have rental cars that come out here. Nobody else comes out here. I think I enjoyed Sagalassos and Pergamon more even than Ephesus. Ephesus is great, it's grand, but it's very, very touristy. Pamukkale, the Hierapolis of Pamukkale is a tourist nightmare. If you were to give up for two people your 30 euro tickets to Pamukkale, you could rent a car, fuel it with gas, drive out here and pay for admission here at Sagalassos instead of going to the Pamukkale Hierapolis. And if I had a recommendation, for this area of the country, that would be it. Good morning. <laughs> we are in the back of John's, or I'm in the back of John's rental car again because we are off to Aphrodisus. It's another ancient city, a little bit closer to Pemukale this time. Uh, so yeah, we're heading there now. Oh, I didn't go home. We have arrived in Aphrodisus. The drive was very beautiful again. It was just about an hour. I think it's called Aphrodisius. Aphrodisius. Aphro sure. Diasis. Dis. Di. I, okay, maybe. I don't know. Di. Said maybe. perfectly the first time, Tristan. Said perfectly <laughs> the first time. It looks like it's going to be another really quiet, cool day. It's uh, only about 25 degrees here. And there's like no other people. So I think it's gonna be really nice here. Unfortunately, the museum here is closed, um, which is a shame because I think a lot of the original sculptures and everything are in here. Um, but hopefully it's open when you get here and it's a, probably a good thing to save for last during the hottest part of the day. But it's closed for us, but that's okay. Welcome to the ancient city and museum of Aphrodisias. Thank you for choosing our audio guide application. Aphrodisias is a remarkably preserved Roman period city in ancient Caria, which was famous in antiquity for its sanctuary of Aphrodite. Here, you will see the largest ornamental ancient pool and one of the best preserved and largest stadiums of the ancient world. Right now, I'm sitting at the top of the stadium, and this is pretty incredible. Uh, look at this. This is where they did javelin, chariot races, gladiator fights, and all of that stuff. Just imagine, just imagine all these people. The 25, 30,000 people all around you. You come out to do your sport. Maybe you're a gladiator. Everybody in the crowd cheers as you emerge, cheers as you emerge from one of these end entrances, one of these end porticos, you come in, the crowd's going crazy. Oh, what a feeling, how, how very cool, very, very powerful sort of feeling place. Very, ah. Known to tourists and travelers since the 18th century, it has been the subject of scientific exploration since the early 20th century. Something particularly unique and interesting about Aphrodisus is just off of a public square. It's sort of a decorative facade uh, erected by Diocletian, detailing the maximum price of different items. Like so many places today, Turkey in particular, inflation was an issue at the time. And so he set on this beautiful facade the maximum price you could pay for things. Here they have detailed that uh, one Cassandrus Modius of wheat cost you a hundred denarii. One Italian Sectarius of country wine would be eight denarii. An Italian pound of, of pork or beef would be 12 or eight denarii. A bed, the price of a bed even listed. Nut wood bed, eight feet long, four feet wide, 400 denarii. You might be wondering, what is 400 denarii? What's eight denarii? What's two denarii mean? Well, they've even listed the price of a day's work. Blacksmith would make 50 denarii a day. A carpenter, 50 denarii a day. For making a pair of socks, you'd get four denarii. 
A baker also makes 50 denarii a day. Probably my favorite part of Diocletian's Edict of Maximum Prices is it's a look into the sort of products and jobs and things. What could you buy? What was for sale? What jobs were available? And it's kind of like, it's interesting to see that, that they try to do inflation control, but it's also just a, it's a look into the past to see what was being bought and what was being sold. Um, here, in Aphrodisus, very cool, very interesting. It's just very neat, it's very neat. I wonder how much a sword costs. Aphrodisius was a free and autonomous city within the Roman province of Asia. It was best known for the sanctuary of its patron goddess, Aphrodite. Our tour of Aphrodisius has come to an end here at Sebastian, the Temple of Emperors. I really enjoyed Aphrodisius. Everything's really well preserved. It's really, really nice. There, yeah, there's a number of things that are not present in other locations. The stadium was stunning. It's really interesting to see. And it's nice, there's not, there's very few people here. It's felt like we've been, had this ruins almost to ourselves. Yeah, I think we saw the most people here at the Sebastian and then at the theater. I really enjoyed this. I think if you're in the Pamukkale area, Pamukkale itself, the Hierapolis of Pamukkale is the weakest of its, of the offerings locally. Yeah. And this area really shines when you can get a car and you can get away, get away from Pamukkale. Yeah, look at the travertines from below for free. Um, it's almost worth it. It's and not worth going And then try up. and go see other if, sites. Unless you're desperate, you're clawingly desperate to get that Instagram shot because that's what makes you feel fulfilled. We didn't know, so we're hopefully we can save you the trouble. It's not worth it. I don't think it's worth it. These other things are so much nicer. We are done here in uh, the Pamukkale and Denizli area. Uh, and it's with heavy hearts that we say goodbye to John. He leaves tonight, he goes back home, and tomorrow we leave for uh, the coast. Bye, John. Bye. Bye. It's a pleasure being on Wandering Blue Passports. That's why we do it. That's why we do it. <laughs>